my mentor reached out. She said, hey, Nehemiah, I know you like to give back. There's something called the Hoodie Awards I think you should run for. Steve Harvey does an annual award each year called the Hoodie Awards, which stands for Neighborhood Awards. And they and the awardees are like cool things in the hood, like best fried chicken, best car wash. My particular award was best community leader. So she said, hey, I think you should run for it. I'm like, yo, why should I do it? I only got a day to do it. I ended up running for the award. I ended up losing, unfortunately. I did become a finalist. They flew me out to Atlanta. Once he got off that stage, I snuck in the back. What's up, everybody? It is the Sales Wolves Podcast. This is episode 48. I am Tyler Harris. And I'm Joseph Caldwell. And we've got... Nehemiah Davis, and I'm happy to be here. And we, yes. collectively, are the Sales Wolves. Ow. <laughs> All right, guys, so as you can see, we've got a uh, special guest, but before we get into that, uh, what we'd like to always do is real quick run through why in the world we have chosen to spend our time uh, putting out value on this podcast. You wanna run through Man, that? Man, and the quick? reason we do that is because we believe that all people, no matter what they do in every area of life, there are sales people. You have to, if you're a stay-at-home dad or mom, you have got to sell your little kid on eating broccoli. I mean, everybody, every interaction we have with people is, is a sales interaction. Um, and so we want to make sure that those people are appreciated. Mm -hmm. We appreciate sales. And people that are actually in, in the sales world, when I'm selling a product, a, a drink, or, yeah. or I'm selling a book, or, or whatever, sometimes that can be a lonely world, and you can get frustrated and, and uh, beat up out there, and you need encouragement, and you need tactical uh, solutions uh, that you can use on a daily basis. So that's why we do the podcast, Absolutely. and we want to be able to take some of what we've been able to succeed in and pass it on. Um, we don't use this platform as a platform for us to to make any money, which we probably should, but we don't. <laughs> we, we that's just, why we have Nehemiah on. That's why we have him on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna, we're going to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. And, awesome. and the funny thing is not just take what we've learned from our successes, but probably more importantly, take what we've learned from our failures. Well, because I've had more failures than successes. So. <laughs> there you go. It's awesome. So we've got a uh, special guest on today. I'm extremely excited. Um, so let me take this back a little bit. So the Ask Gary V book launch, that was March of 2016. March 2016. Um, Nehemiah was there. He was at the front door when we walked in. He was helping out, uh, as I've come to learn that that he does uh, full time. Basically, he is a uh, he is a uh, person that's just giving value all the time. But we met that day. But that was just like a hey, what's up, man, and kind of kept walking. Um, I guess about six, seven months ago, I saw him at that Tony Robbins event, just kind of yep. walking by. And then two weekends ago, up in Newark, we were at this uh, Take Ownership Mastermind with Gerard Adams and Eric Thomas, and I saw him again from afar, and I was like, all right, you know, once is uh, once is good, two is like, okay, I get the hint. And then the third time, I was like, all right, obviously it's, it's meant to be for me to connect with this guy. And um, so we started talking, we went to dinner uh, that night or the, or the next night, and um, I've just blown away by what he's done. Since, since we met that March of 2016, I started following him on Instagram, um, and I've just been blown away by the stuff that he does. When you, when you look at the definition of a servant leader, that is Nehemiah, because everything you see that he's doing online, it's all about giving back. It's all about supporting kids. It's all about supporting families. It's all about giving back to the community that he's in. And every single thing that he does encompasses that. And so when you talk about shepherding and when you talk about being a servant leader, like that is Nehemiah. Um, and he's got the shirt on, the circle of greatness, uh, which he's going to talk about here, I'm sure. Um, but it's just an incredible thing to be able to watch him for the last, what, year and a half, and then finally get to really connect. Uh, and it's always refreshing when you do connect with someone that you've been following for a while, and they're just a real person. 
like we got along, uh, was just a real dude uh, that I could connect with on a personal level, not just a professional level. Um, so I've enjoyed getting to know you over the last couple of weeks here, and I'm extremely excited to have you on the, uh, the podcast, man. You know what? You know what's crazy? Let me set this up real quick. You're talking you're talking about giving, right? Yeah. And a lot of people that listen to our podcast will be like, "No, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't I don't care about that servanthood stuff, man. Let's 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 figure out how I can sell something else, how I can learn something here, but what most people don't understand is that almost I actually I don't know a single one of people that's very successful that has not made giving and servanthood part of their success. Mm -hmm. I don't know one. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's, it is an unbelievable law of seed time, progression time, and harvest. Yeah. And when you give, you can't help but get it back, press down, shaking together, running over. So absolutely, it's, uh, it's impressive. So man, I'd love to hear your story. I've read a little bit about you, but I want to give you the give you the show to talk about kind of where you come from and uh, and what's happened along the way and, uh, and, and uh, just tell us what's up. Well, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you to you gentlemen for giving me the opportunity and giving me your platform really to share some of my story. And uh, I'm so happy that I got the opportunity to meet Tyler, but this time we actually connected, right? So I would have been connected with him if I would have known all those times. Oh, I seen you here. I seen you here. I seen you here. Listen, bro, I would have been made that connection. But, you know, everything happens in this perfect time. So we had a phenomenal time together at that mastermind. And I'm just grateful that now that we're here and we're already uh, further building out our relationship. So the premise of my whole life now is really about service. So when you really talked about shaking down and all of that, I really lived that life. I truly believe in the law of reciprocity. Whatever you put out in the world, you're going to get it back. And I tell people all the time that 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 mean positive, that mean negative. That's why it's so important only to sow good seed in the soil. So for years, I'm going to talk, talk about my story, but for years, me and my friend was always talking about, look, we were trying to figure out who can be the best farmer. Like, let's figure out who can put more seeds in the ground, right? So that's been hey, my concept. Hey, Neil, yes, sir. back up a little bit for me um, as far as like physically back up a little bit because I know you got that, that, that oh, smooth that, cut and you can't okay, see it. Man. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. All right, good. So, so when you're saying back up, I'm thinking about the story. <laughs> We, I had this concept, people, and I would love if other people can adopt it. Have a challenge with your friends. Figure out who can sow more seeds first. Not even hmm. first, but figure out who can sow the most seed. Because guess what happens when you keep sowing seeds? Eventually, trees will grow. And sometimes people don't get that analogy because we're in this microwave generation where we want everything right now opposed to just putting it in the dirt, watering it, watering it watering and just allowing it to grow in due time so before i even got to this mindset guys i grew up in west philadelphia i was born and raised like they say on the playground where i, <laughs> 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 I, was, I, was, I was raised by my mom and grandma my dad been in jail since i was two years old for committing murder but my mom growing up i didn't feel the absence of my father because my mom was always there she always did her very best to give me the best life that she could. So growing up, I had the opportunity in high school, fast forward to high school, I had the opportunity to go to a school where I was the minority. There was only like 30 black kids in the whole school. And at this particular school, this was the first, I was able to put lenses on where I could see more from my life. Growing up in the inner city of Philadelphia, you generally, you become your environment. Like it, you become what you're around mostly, I believe. So at this school, I got to actually see more. I got to see a little more than the row homes. I got to see a little more than the ghetto. I got to see a little more. And at these particular, at the school, I got to spend the night over my friends' homes. They had pool houses. They had horses. They had four-wheelers. All on the premises of the home. Also got to spend the night at other friends' homes where literally my man had a whole third floor for his bedroom. I'm like, listen, I had a little square box. Like, you got a whole third floor and it was a massive mansion right so it brings me to my favorite quote about oliver wendell holmes once your mindset is expanded to a new concept or idea it's hard to go back to his original way of thinking so that was the first viewpoint for me that i believe yo i could actually have more for my life than what i grew up in right so fast forward you know i was 
got kicked out of school. So that was great. I mean, it wasn't great, but I got kicked out. Went to a new school. I decided I was going to do a little bit better. I did good for that whole year, and then I had the opportunity to go to college. So fast forward to college, I decided to go to college and give it my absolute all. I went to college great. I started doing amazing, and that lasted for about three months, and then I ended up getting kicked out of college. So to that point, people, I got kicked out of high school. I got kicked out of college, and I had nine jobs to that point and got fired from every single one of them. So the final approach was, hey, how about I try this job thing one more time? And this is, I believe, I want to say the turning point of my life. And this was my favorite job, which I will never regret. I worked at the private airport, which is called Atlantic Aviation. And at this time, at this particular job, first time I met my, the lady who's, I'm a, I met the lady who I'm about to marry, my fiance. So that was dope. In addition to that, I used to get on private jets. I've been on the owner of a Cowboys jet. I've seen Bill Gates get off his jet. I've seen so many billionaires and multi-millionaires fly in on these jets, people who you would never know about. I've been on a Trump plane. When I got on his plane, pilot told me to take my shoes off, all white carpet, gold everywhere. He got a shower, a bathtub, all inside of an airplane. So again, coming from where I come from, you would never see anything like this. I never knew a form of travel like private jets even existed. So at that moment, guys, I had a real shift that I can actually become a real businessman. So part of that happening, I got kicked out. I got fired from that job. So to this point, guys, dad been in jail since I was two, kicked out of high school, kicked out of college, fired from 10 jobs. Most people probably would have quit it. At that time, I started my very first business, which was a fruit truck. But before I started that business, I made a decision to myself. I said, from this point, I'm going to make entrepreneurship work or I'm going to make entrepreneurship work. And the problem that most people have is they never make a decision and stick with it because life happens to them. They resort to their plan. B. I eliminated plan B. Like I said, this has to work or it has to work. And thanks to God, it had been 10 years and they've been working. But I made a decision. Like I made a decision like, yo, I'm going to go be great. So I started my fruit truck. Then I started a cleaning service. And now, fast forward, now we have a business academy. Every business and everything I start, people, I just commit first, figure out wrestling. So that's a little bit about me and where I am now and what I'm doing. And in addition to all of that, we have the nonprofit uh, Nehemiah Davis Foundation, which I guess we'll even talk further about that with some of mm-hmm. our dialogue. But I'm just really grateful, guys, to really be here and actually was able to change my life based on, you know, my mom putting me in those schools and putting me in a different environment. Like, your environment will make you or break you. So I'm super happy to be a part of your environment today. I love hearing people's stories. Mm -hmm. That was a great one, man. I appreciate you sharing all that. I I appreciate your willingness to share the the good, bad, and the ugly. Uh, And and knowing and understanding now on the other end of it that that's what's made you who you are today. I think he has me beat on how many jobs he got fired from. Yeah? Yeah. I was a professional uh, job goer. I could get fired from any job. (laughs) I was good at it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hey, one thing uh, I think would be a great talking point as this is a sales podcast, and, and I think this is a um, something that people deal with a lot, and it's something that they talked about at the ownership event that I um, uh, reconnected with you at here recently. You talked about the, I was going to make entrepreneurship work, or I was going to make entrepreneurship work, and I was on your Instagram live last night, and you were telling somebody, giving this advice, um, the exact same advice. I feel like so many people are not excelling, they may be getting by, they may be doing okay, but they're not excelling in whatever they're doing, maybe that be sales or entrepreneurship, because they've got that safety net, where if it doesn't work, they can always go back to this, where if I fail, I can always go back to that. And to me, one of the best examples of that is the people that are all salary plus commission focused, like what's the salary? That's the safety net. Because if I don't sell anything, I got the salary this month. But with what you said, you made that decision that there was no other option. You eliminated the safety net, and ET talked about it last weekend. Like if there's a guy up there tightrope walking, and there's no safety net, like I'm going to that show, and yeah, I'll pay yeah. whatever I gotta pay. 
because I know what the, the downside is. Oh, and, yeah. and I know that that person's going to ultimately make it across or at least have an insane amount of confidence to do so. Or you're going to get to see somebody die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so to talk a little bit about like, how did that, how did you create that mindset? Was it just like a, I'm fed up, like I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and I got to make something work? Or what was it that made that switch with you? Well, for me at that time, you got to realize, man, when you got kicked out of college and then fired from that job, if I didn't have a degree, first of all, who's going to hire me, right? Like who, and matter of fact, not only hire me, but they're only going to pay me a limited amount of money. I would have made, I would have possibly made minimum wage. I didn't have a degree. I didn't have connections at the time, right? So what would I have gotten? Like probably nothing. I would have been... I would have had to live an average life, right? Because I didn't have a degree. I didn't have any connections. So I made a decision like, yo, I might as well bet on me, give this thing called business a try and see how, how it worked. Because the thing about a job at times is you got to cap them. Like you only, they're only going to pay you but so much. You're only going to get awarded so many opportunities. The thing about service, the thing about business, the thing about commission base. There is no cap on that. Like, you can be a multi-millionaire. You could be a multi-billionaire. There's no cap on it. And the crazy thing now, Tyler, everyone now who I bring on my team, it's no more salary. It's no more hourly. You get paid based on the work that you put in. Like, I need other people, like E.T. said, he need other people killing gazelles with him. I need other people hunting with me. Everyone on my team, you pay yourself. Like, the money you make is based on how hard you work and how many deals you close now. So for me, the mindset it takes to, you gotta really just eliminate that mindset. And I tell people, even with a job, you can eliminate that mindset. You just gotta act like you're no longer getting paid from that job, and you're only gonna get paid based on the work that you put in and the service that you provide. I tell people, people pay you based on the benefit that you offer to them, right? So I think it's so important that people understand like, yo, you can become anything you want, but you got to shift your mindset. Your mindset is the number one key to your success. If you can master, you must master your mindset before you master your skill set and you can literally become anything you put your heart and mind to. That's right. And one of the things that he was saying about a, about a job, and obviously we have a lot of employees and, and I, I love the W-2 position. Um, that's not something I could ever do myself. It's just not, some people are fit for that. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you this from an owner standpoint, you are only gonna get paid the least amount it'll take to replace you. That is a, that is a fact. So, and you don't ever get paid what you're worth as a human being, you only get paid what, what the, the job is worth. worth. And, and, and that coming from somebody who pays a lot of people, you know. We, um, had, a, we had an incredible conversation on this exact topic with, uh, I remember with Jay Do when he was here in mm -hmm. the studio. And it was, it, the way he said it was so brilliant because he said uh, he was stuck in that, in that, in that W-2 situation, feeling like he was excelling and in, in providing this insane amount of value to the company and wasn't being rewarded for doing so and getting these little tiny little raises every year that weren't even uh, keeping up with inflation. And, and finally he said, I was hating the player, but I didn't understand the game. And that was what he was talking about. Like, I didn't understand the game. Like, I didn't understand that, like, no, he's not going to pay me more because that's what the job is worth. Yeah. And the second that he realized that was the second he made that switch and yep. was like, I'll never do this ever again and became unemployable. Yeah, you, can't, you can't get <laughs> mad at it if that's what you chose, yeah. right? You can't. That's, that's part of the deal. But that's also one of the reasons why every position in our company that we've come up with also has the component bonus. of bonus. Like yep. you have to, if you want it, you go earn it, right? So kind of like you, man, on that. So that's that's awesome mindset there. I love it. You want it, you go earn it, right? <laughs> so so one thing that I've, I've noticed about you, um, and it doesn't take people long to notice about you when they start following you on Instagram, is that you are incredible at networking, and connecting with other individuals on a personal level. And because of that, you've been able to get yourself into some situations that the average person would never be able to find themselves in. Uh, one example I'd love for you to be able to tell the story is with Steve Harvey. Uh, but man, like talk about that a little bit in that mindset that you have of like every person you come across being able to provide value to build that relationship because you have no idea what that next person could lead to, right? 
absolutely so. It's so funny. Steve Harvey may take a few minutes to really tell the whole story, but first off, man, service is the key to success. I can make anyone in the world successful. Any, you give me someone who's willing to become successful, I can make them successful. In the first part of making them successful, I'm going to make them serve. <laughs> like, I can, I can guarantee it for anyone. But as far as the Steve Harvey situation, my mentor reached out to me, her name, my mentor reached out to me, um, Gabrielle's mother, Marcella, and she said, hey, Nehemiah, she, mind you, she just came and did my conference in Philadelphia a few years ago. But she said, hey, Nehemiah, I know you like to give back. There's something called the Hoodie Awards I think you should run for. And I'm like, uh, okay, tell me a little bit about it. She said, I don't got much time to tell you because you got to run tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow? What do you mean tomorrow? And I didn't know what these awards was. Steve Harvey does an annual award each year for, it's called the Hoodie Awards, which stands for Neighborhood Awards. And, they, and the awardees are like cool things in the hood, like best fried chicken, best car wash, best barbershop, best hair salon. And my particular award was best community leader. So she said, hey, I think you should run for it. I'm like, yo, why should I do it? I only got a day to do it. So she gave me the information. Again, I'll tell you guys, commit first, figure out the rest later. I live by that model. So I ended up running for the award. I ended up losing, unfortunately. I did become a finalist. They flew me out to Atlanta, me and my family. We had a phenomenal time. At the end, they called the name, and it wasn't me. I was very sad. Um, and the main reason why I was sad, because it was a $30,000 check attached to that winning, which was pretty dope. Mm -hmm. So I ended up losing. A few months later, I heard that Steve Harvey was coming into town at Villanova for a, for a meeting. Not, no, he, was, he had a speech to do. So my mom said, hey, um, Steve Harvey's coming in. And I'm like, oh, cool. Let's go see him. So my, you guys, once he got off that stage, I snuck in the back. Soon as he got off the stage, and you know the caliber of guy he is, they should have stopped me. I snuck <laughs> right back with no problem to meet him. But which is the cool part about it is I came from an event with my friend, Chef Will. Mind you guys, I don't work for anybody. He needed help. He said, hey, can you come help be a waiter? I need you to come serve tables for me. I'm like, yo, cool. I'll come serve tables for you. And I was at an event that I probably could have got an invite to. But instead of going as an invitee, I went as a server. So I had a suit on, black suit, white shirt, black tie. I'm carrying around waiter, waiter pans. I'm serving hors d'oeuvres. I'm washing dishes. I'm doing all of these things, right? But when I left, I left to go to Villanova with the suit on. Mind you, I snuck in the back. The only reason why I was able to sneak in the back because I had the suit on. They probably assumed <laughs> I was with them. Yeah. So if I had my regular, generally I would wear street coat clothes every day, like regular shirt like this, jeans. But I had my suit on. I snuck right in the back. They didn't say nothing to me. And when I got to the back, I went straight up to them like, hey, Mr. Harvey, um, <laughs> you don't know me yet. I said it to him, yo, you're going to be my mentor. I said that to him at that very moment. But in addition to that, I said, hey, I lost the award. It was very heartbreaking to me because I worked extremely hard to get those votes and everything. He said, listen, young man, losing is, you're going to lose in life. It is all right. Do you know how many awards I lost? He said, try it again. I'm all right, cool. So moral of the story is a few months later, guys, I'm in the street. I'm walking. I'm in New Orleans. I went down to New Orleans literally the night of, like, I decided to go to New Orleans. My barber was going. He let me stay with him. I wasn't going to go other than that because hotels was crazy at the time. Like, I'm not spending 500 a night by myself. So I went to New Orleans. But on the night, that night on the street, I met a young lady like, yo, I know you from social media. You dope. You doing all these things. I didn't know her from a can of paint. Her name was Patrice. I'm like, yo, nice to meet you, too. I appreciate you. Mind you, I never knew who she was. We stayed in touch for months via IG. Never knew who she was at all. Stayed in touch with her. Dope, dope young lady, all of that. So part of me going to New Orleans was really to meet her, which is crazy. Next day, guys, she ended up being on the stage as the main speaker. I'm like, yo, I just seen you last night. Didn't know she was a, ma a speaker of that level, first off. But I gave her my book on stage, which was dope. And, you know, we ended that. Hey, see you next time. So fast forward, guys, months later, the award ceremony come back up again. I become a finalist. But this time I win. Later on it, later on that night, I get a DM or early, right after that picture, I get a DM like, 
yo, here's a picture of you and you getting an award. I'm like, yo, where were you at? I was in the front row. Moral of the story is that young lady was Steve Harvey's husband's, wait, Steve Harvey's manager's wife. That's who the young lady was. So once I won an award, I was on the stage like, Steve Harvey, you don't know yet. You're going to be my mentor. He said, I'm going to do it for you right now. He said, all of them. But she said, look, don't happen. Just connect with me. I'm locked in with you. I'm like, dope. So, guys, fast forward later, I did win an award. Thank God. I was so extremely happy to win the award. But fast forward later, I, I continued to stay in touch with her. I knew it was about time for me to propose to my lady or whatever. So I went on a whim. I said, and that's funny. I got it in my phone like September 7th. I'm going to propose to my lady on Steve Harvey. Never really knew I would do that. I got it in my phone that exact message. So November something, I DM'd her because I was trying to do it on the local news station here in Philly. So I ended up DMing her, asking her could, you know, she make the introduction. What is the possibility of me proposing to my lady on Steve Harvey? She said, hey, Steve Harvey and my husband's currently in Africa, so you will probably have to wait. And she said, matter of fact, let me ask you some questions. She started asking me all these questions. She sent it to the producers herself. Two weeks later, I get the call like, hey, you want to come on the show to propose? I'm like, wow. <laughs> so fast forward, people, I, I went on the show. I proposed to my lady. had a great conversation with Steve. Uh, we had Maxwell come sing to my fiance. More of the story. I had an engagement that was probably around, flew my whole family out, put us up, probably around $75,000, right? Cost me nothing. And the reason why I want to say that it, it's because of service. Mm -hmm. Like the young lady co-signed me because she said, I've been watching you for a year. I've been seeing the work you're going to do. And she said, you never know who has the power to bless you. And I wanted to bless you with this opportunity. So if I didn't go to New Orleans, I would have never met her. Right. And if I wasn't serving all my life for these last few years, I would have never won an award. So the premise of this whole story is I was able to will Steve to be a mentor. I was able to meet her all on the premise of serving and adding value to other people's life. When you keep adding value to other people's life, trust me, people take notice to that. And they're going right. to do, you know, they're, they'll try to help you. So I know the Steve Harvey part was kind of long, guys, but I wanted to bring it full circle just to let people know, man, a power of service can pay you more than money could pay you. I couldn't have paid for the engagement at that level. <laughs> like, it, I couldn't have. You know, it didn't, it's too much, right? But I was able yeah. to do that because of a relationship. So I try to tell people, man, relationships will take you further than money will ever. That's a fact. Man, that's awesome. And, it, and it's carried over into everything you're doing up till today. Like at the event that we were at, you were helping, you were moving chairs, you were handing people mics, you were doing this. When we met you at the Ask Gary V uh, book launch, you were helping park cars, you were uh, ushering people in, you were getting people to their seat. Exactly. And it's, it's. Hey, Tyler, they say, what you do, Tyler? They say, Nehemiah, what you do? I say, whatever it takes. <laughs> and whatever you need. Whatever, whatever you need me to do right now, that's my job. But you know what? The thing is, that's so it's it's so different. Like everybody else is out there asking for something. Yeah. You're just <clears throat> asking, how can I help you? Like, hey, I want to come to your event. Great. Hey, can you hook me up with a ticket? Hey, can I meet you afterwards? Hey, can I do this? Hey, would you would you uh, be on my podcast? Hey, would you do this? You're just like, hey. How can I help? Like, is there any areas that you have a need in for the event? Let me fill that need and let me actually serve you. And when you start a relationship off by serving Dude. someone, it's it, it opens up every single door. It and makes the, the universe in debt to you. Absolutely. And the universe will be in debt to like no that. one. The universe yeah, will be thanks. in debt to no one. So when you provide and you provide <laughs> and you provide, the universe goes, well, I'm not. I'm in debt to no one. I got to mm -hmm. take care of this kid. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. And it's one of my favorite quotes. It says, "If you do the small things like they're big things, one day you'll do big things like they're small things." And that's what you were doing. You were executing on the small things. You were literally like washing dishes and and serving people. But then that ultimately led to you proposing to your wife on the Steve Harvey Show, winning the award, getting Steve as a mentor because of your willingness to do that. A lot of people would have said. Heck no, I'm not going to come serve people. What, what, no, yeah, like I've got, yep. I've got, I've got more important things to do. But you weren't fancy, right? You went and you did it, and good things happened because of it. Hey, we've got like five more minutes here. I want to make sure that you can talk about your uh, the Greatness Academy and the things that you're doing there. Um, and I think it's probably one of your obviously passion projects that's my, your main focus yep. right now. So I want to make sure that you get some time to talk about that. 
Yeah, so really quick, uh, again, thank you guys so much for having me on here, man. It's been a phenomenal show. So we started Circle of Greatness a year ago, guys. And again, that came from, I promise you, man, the mistake, like what you get out of serving is just ridiculous. So one of my mentors is named Kendall Ficklin. He got a company called Grandation. And last December, he came to my spot October, like, hey, can I use your space? I want to do a presentation. I, I was supposed to be out of town. I ended up watching this presentation, a 45-minute presentation of how he can change your life, of how awesome this community is. And then at the end, he sold you, like, hey, you could join my community for free right now. And you can join my community for free right now. And then it'll be like $50 every month afterwards. And I looked at it. I'm like, man. This look like something I could do. I could do this. This look easy because I've been doing it all these years. I've been connecting people for years, Tyler, and I've been like, hey, how do I get paid off of connecting people? I make some, I create a connection for someone. They make a, a lot of money off of it, and guess what? I get nothing other than just saying, hey, I connected them to. So I'm like, yeah. yo, what if I created my own community? Now I'm connecting people, but now people are actually paying a, a, a membership fee. So I literally watched specifically what Kendall did. I called them a week later. I said, yo, what actual systems do I need to start my own community? He told me X, Y, Z. And literally, guys, December 15th, we launched Circle of Greatness Academy, which is an online and in-person community where we help you get to that next level personally and professionally. We push you. We equip you with resources. We help you enhance your environment. We help you uh, get in touch with amazing speakers. And we're, we're just a platform to help you grow. But I say all that to say, guys, we started the company December. We just crossed a six-figure business in the year off of something that I did by mistake. I wasn't even supposed to do this. I wasn't even supposed to be in town. I watched what he did, and I'm like, yo, I'm going to replicate it. He told me everything I needed to do. I didn't have a website for three months. We built this whole business off of text messaging, asking people to get involved. and. Wow. Just starting, man. Most people would never start a business because they overanalyze what it takes to get started. I started right. in a month. I literally started in a month, and I started with the value first. We got 100, 200 people in in the first two months, free trial, and we said, hey, we want to give you a much as much value as we can in your first 30 days so you do not leave. And we're able to build that business all off of doing that. So, again, adding value first. You add enough value to someone's life, they won't leave, period. And your relationship, yeah. add enough value. Right. You put enough deposits in the bank, you will never get a with, withdrawal fee. I mean, you will never get an overdraft fee. So we, again, Circle Greatness Academy is for anyone who's looking to get to their next level. We help a dozen people fire their boss. We help a dozen people start their own books. We help a dozen people start nonprofits. We help dozens of people get promotions on their jobs and i'm not necessarily saying we're physically helping but we're equipping them with tools we're giving them the resources they need and then they're applying i tell people all the time tyler you can listen to this information all day long you can listen to every podcast in the world every ig live in the world every facebook live but if you do not use the information it is absolutely useless so i challenge people man if you could take anything from me high school high school kicked out of high school, college, not the smartest tool in the tool shed. I'm just a door. Become a door in 2018. Well, it's 2018 now. Become a door. Act on your goals and dreams and stop overthinking what it takes to get it done and get it done. Absolutely. Love that. Last couple of things I wanted to, to mention. Number one, the coolest thing I've ever seen is you see this uh, Circle of Greatness logo here. Yeah. I get on Instagram yesterday and dude's got a mascot, like the full like dude in a like big deal with the circle of greatness, like you know that Saturday Night Live, yeah, 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 like yeah. Justin Timberlake, like yeah. come on down to Greatnessville or whatever. But dude, he's got this mascot just like running around. It was the best thing ever. Uh, but to your point, what you were just saying, if you add that value up front, the money will follow. And that's, it seems like that's like your business plan is like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna add value to these people. And I've seen you do it. It is very unique. Like you're humble and, and you don't, and you're not really going into like the, 
how much you do that, but like last night on Instagram Live, like he was on the phone with these people, and it's not just like these surface level, like, hey, here's how you succeed, and hey, here's a good way to build an email list. It's like, he was like literally on this call, had all these people on there, and he's like, who else needs, who else has a question? Who else has a question? They would ask a specific question, he would think about it, and he would give them a smart answer, like a life-changing, impactful answer yeah. back. And then he would follow it up like, with accountability, he's like, so when are you gonna do that? Like there was a girl that was talking about um, writing a book. He's like, so when's the book gonna be done? She was like, ah, I think January. He's like, you think? You think, what he's will like, happen if when, you think? When will it be done? And she set a date. He's like, so finished, edited, complete, copy, completely done by then. She's like, yeah, sure. He's like, what do you mean, yeah, sure? Like, yeah. like you can say, like, and, nope. and, but, he's, but he's literally like individually one-on-one -on -one breathing life into these people, which yeah. is incredible. Uh, one last thing I wanted to mention was I've really con uh, enjoyed connecting with Travis too, Travis Wolf, um, and his book, his guess. book is uh, Go Be Great, right? And uh, I've been watching him on Instagram. He is an awesome, awesome, awesome guy. And he also works for the Philadelphia Police Department. So we talked about that. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, but he's an awesome right. guy. We hey, met. Did, you, did, you sign, did you get him signed up yet? Because I know you were signing up. <laughs> so, so yeah, I've talked to him. I've gotten all the information to him. I'm not licensed in Pennsylvania, but I told him, like, look, I'm going to go through the whole process with you. Make sure you understand that he wants to get it to his attorneys and stuff. And then uh, we'll, have, we'll have that person take care of it for him. But 100% we'll get him taken care of. Yeah. Um, Last question we want to ask you, we ask every guest, and we're going to compile this all together and have an awesome clip of just every single person's answer. But this is the Sales Wolves podcast. It's not just about howling and, and using interesting uh, analogies for wolves, but <laughs> we actually want to know your definition. Like what, when you think of a sales wolf, like if you see people out in sales, you're like that dude is a sales wolf. What does that mean to you? I mean, when I think of it, I think of, you know, they're, they're a hustler, man. Like when, when you say sales, I think of someone who's extremely good at what they do and we don't even got to use it pertaining to sales, but you could be a sales wolf with your family. You could be a sales wolf with your friends. You could be a sales wolf with making money. So when I think of it, I just think of someone who hustles their way to get what they want. That's awesome. awesome, man. So let everybody know where they can find you. What are your, uh, what are your handles on social media? And we'll link up your uh, Greatness Academy as well. So CircleGreatnessAcademy.com, Neo, N-E-O-D-A-V-I-S-O on Instagram, Circle Greatness on Facebook, or Nehemiah Davis on Facebook. Good deal. Awesome. We'll link those up. Uh, man, I cannot thank you enough uh, for your time this morning, uh, jumping on the podcast, and uh, I've appreciated getting to know you better and look forward to building a relationship with you further uh, as we move forward and connecting more. Uh, but I appreciate your willingness to get on here, tell your story, the good, bad, and the ugly. And I think there's some people that are going to get some really, really Absolutely. good value out of this. Yeah. So we appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, thank you, Nehemiah. Thank you all so much. And I look forward to seeing you all out there and I think Greenville or something like yep. that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's like, <laughs> that is it. Oh, and today, before we forget, it is Tyler's birthday. Yes, that's that's correct. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, buddy. You want to hold my hand? Not really. I feel, I, feel, I feel special because we get to do the podcast on his birthday. It releases a oh, I feel great. That's Ab awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Let's give a birthday howl as yeah. we close this thing down. So this was Tyler. episode 48, I guess the birthday episode, but yep. we got a special guest on. This has been incredible. Episode 48 of the Sales Wheels Podcast. I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And, <laughs> and we are the Sales Wolves. Howl. 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 All right. <laughs>